without a doubt it rips your life apart because you're always away and it means that if you're always if you're constantly moving and you're always um traveling hotel rooms and stuff it doesn't do a lot for makes you a bit unstable because you have no grounding there's nothing there's no way you can't you don't, you don't, don't sort of have anywhere to escape to you just have the next place that you've got to do whatever you've got to do do shit off nice one thanks a lot is there any of the others coming out uh i think they're probably out i don't know i don't know i never i never i always find uh, i never know where they are <laughs> Cool. Come back to Nottingham in the future. No, no, I'll give yeah, you definitely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. There is a sort of product element to it because you're sort of shunted around. I mean, if we were on wheels, it might be easier. Do you know what I mean? Uh, certainly easier for everyone else, and they could just sort of pull us in and, and do whatever they need to do with us. But it's like the, the price you're prepared to pay. Too. This is dinner. Après show din dins. Microwave. <coughs> Apri June twenty first, the longest day. Again. Perfect. This is the uh, vintage. I mean, not much. Ooh, good. lovely. But we call it home. I don't want old wine. I want new wine. Yeah, can't you buy a bloody new one? A sold out tour, a hit single, and their album Razorblade Suitcase in the top five. But Gavin Rossdale isn't happy. He wants some recognition from the music press. We never heard anyone in any review saying this is an English band that sold 12 million albums worldwide. Well done. <laughs> Good job. Nice one, boys. <laughs> you never hear that. It's never been said. Bush. Bless them, are quite clearly three years adrift, both musically and spiritually, from the dizzy rush of London in February 1997. They provide the critics with some much needed bloodletting. After all, here's a band who, plagued by accusations of calculated careerism in the UK, and having sold 10 million albums in the US, still remain obsessed with the idea of gaining some sort of critical acceptance on their own soil. Well, we're not really interested in Bush, and I don't know anything about them, really. Um, and why would I? They're peddling a kind of outmoded form of music. If they'd managed um, to do what they've done in America, but in Britain first, if they'd gone out and played tons of British clubs, and, and genuinely the British gig-going public had responded to them in an enormously positive way, so therefore, you know, we could sit here and say, well, you know, I could sit here and say, well, personally, I don't see it, but there's a ton of people out there that these people speak to and for. Then, you know, obviously we would regard that as a serious proposition for NME because, you know, part of, the, part of our job is to reflect what people are actually listening to and what actually gets them off. Of course you want someone who, who maybe you like some of the, some of the writers that you've read uh, and, and they've introduced you to other bands. You know, it was the enemy and, and the melody maker introduced me to, to the Pixies, introduced me to the Throne Muses, My Bloody Valentine. And it's a lot easier to be slagged off by the, the Daily Mail or, or, or the Times because you can give a toss. <laughs> Personally, if I was Bush and I was raking in the millions, I wouldn't give a toss what the enemy said about me one way or the other. Very flattering that people feel that way. One suspects that, therefore, there's some, some rather guilty secret hidden there. Maybe they actually ultimately understand that they're not hip and they want to be. The whole point about someone like Steve Sutherland is that, you know, the only thing that he has to do with music is to sit around and describe it. And... You know, who does he speak for, really? Does he speak for all those people that came to see us in England? Does he speak for all those people that came to see us in Europe? Or does he speak for all the people who likes in America? Or does he speak for himself and his editorial staff and his angle? And he needs um, to create his good guys and his bad guys. There is a certain English mentality that seems to, bullet, you know, don't get too sort of um, above your station, you know, sort of don't earn too much money. Otherwise, you... We, we can't own you anymore, you know, you don't belong to us anymore, you belong to them, the Americans. This kind of, there is a bit of a sort of them and us thing about America. And uh, I suppose I probably was part of it until I went there and, and was inside it and realised that 
they just 